This is Drom Shakasuto. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe and like this video. Thank you for coming. Baruch Hashem. Today my, uh, my voice is not in the best shape ever. I'm not alone. Baruch Hashem. We know that to receive the wisdom of Hashem, knowledge, of the truth, and basically to, to understand the will of Hashem, of the Creator, it depends in humility, anava. Now, humility is something that most of the world cannot stand. No one wants to be humiliated, to be humbled, to be ashamed. And it's a very great and huge level for a person to reach that level of wanting to learn in every situation and from, from every difficulty. Because usually people desire pleasure, satisfaction, joy, and everything that brings this satisfaction is welcome, like fortune and food and good news, success, money, honor, respect, love. Now when all those good things, all those goodies are, are being delivered, so the evil inclination, the Yetzara, is hitchhiking, is catching a ride on those good things that Hashem, that the Creator, is willing to give us. He wants us to be happy and satisfied. But while those good things are coming to our plate, the evil inclination is catching a ride on them and trying to distract our thoughts from the fact that we received all those good things from the Almighty, from His goodness. And then we start having those foreign thoughts of self-pleasure and self and selfishness. And we start thinking, oh, I deserve that honor. Oh, that's my food. Oh, I want that pleasure to continue and on. Instead of feeling just gratitude on that joy that's been given to us from Him for free. And it's written for us that in the Bible, that the Torah, the wisdom of Hashem, the light of Hashem, been given to us, Mimidbar Matana, from the desert as a free gift. So only when you're standing in the desert, in a place that you know that you're empty-handed, that you don't have, it's a desert, you don't have water over there, you don't have your house over there, it's the desert. Only when you are standing in that position, that you know that you are dry completely from all directions, then you have the ability to receive the Torah as a free gift, as a gift. And the wisdom of the Torah will always be given only to people that will consider it as a gift. But for you to consider it as a gift, for that you need to fill yourself as the desert, that you know that you are empty and just hoping and preparing yourself to accept the loving kindness of the Creator for yourself, on yourself. Now, the greatest thing of them all is that the Creator, when He was thinking on 
the good things that you will provide to us, that you will give us. He thought, what will be the greatest thing of them all to give? He wasn't saying, okay, you know what, I'll give them one million dollars each and I'll give them a house and 70 years or 120 and I'll, I'll finish with that. No. He was looking for the best deal, the best gift that he can give us and he decided to give us that, the biggest gift of them all. Now, what is the biggest, goodest thing in the creation? The Creator Himself. He is the source of good. So He decided to give Himself to His creations. Now, we don't even understand what we're talking about. We're all so focused on our mortgages and on our houses and on our desires that we cannot understand even the completion of the gift that we received, the potential that is available for us to enjoy from. And it is the Creator Himself. Now for that, humility is required. To understand the will of Hashem, to receive the wisdom of Hashem, those concepts are only describing the way that the gift itself will be given to us. But actually, what it will be given to us, it's the Creator's existence in our life. This is the final result of the believers following the light of Hashem, receiving the wisdom of Hashem. It's that we're going to know that He is with us, that He is with you. When you eat, when you drink, when you sleep, when you think, when you run, when you hide, and when you're succeeding and you're growing and you're enjoying, that you will have that understanding that there is nothing except of Him. Then you will receive the gift. His being by your side. His existence lives inside of you, inside your own spirit, filling your existence, your body your emotions, your mind. Now, many people are not ready, or maybe we're, we're not ready yet for those understandings, because you can see people outside in the world that they desire small things. I also have issues and problems in my life, like every other person person and always when I start talking about my issues in my prayers with Hashem yesterday night for an example I went and start speaking with him on certain details on certain things that I need to solve and while I was talking to him about my problems I realized that my problems are only a result of certain difficulties that are much larger than my personal issues. I'm not the only one that is suffering from this problem. I'm suffering from this problem because this is a problem, because it's an issue that goes on in the world and people are suffering from that issue. And I'm not the only one that is suffering from that pain. I'm not the only one that is bothered by those topics, by those issues. Welcome. Thank you for coming. There is a certain kind of darkness that I'm experiencing in my life, but that darkness exists in the world. This is part of the supervision of the Creator that is hidden, that is blocked, that cannot be seen. And everyone are feeling that darkness in a way. And if not that darkness, another darkness. So immediately when I started and wanted even to try to start praying for myself, I realized, what are you doing? You need to pray on bigger things. And not because that I desire bigger things or because I'm not selfish or righteous or whatever. Just because that with my mind, I realized that the root, the reason for my problem doesn't start with me. 
Because let's say that my specific issue that I was talking about yesterday will be solved, I'll have another issue. Immediately I will be able to focus on the next problem that is in front of my eyes. And even if it won't be mine, my best friend's trouble bothers me as well. So like for sure that I will be bothered. Why? Because the complete redemption has not taken place yet. And that's our problem. That we don't understand the potential of, of our mission to achieve that completion of coming closer to Hashem. Coming closer to Hashem, of course it will pay your mortgage. Of course it will heal you from all your health issues. Of course it will bring peace between the couples and understandings between parents to their children. Yes, but much more than that. And much more than that is required also. Because if your problems will be solved completely, it won't solve mine and won't solve his and hers. And the world will still suffer from hunger and drought and financial issues and plagues and, 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 and heat that is increasing in the world in, in ways that we don't even think about and deal with. And certain issues that are not bothering us in our daily mm, mm, de dealings, but are deep issues that people are struggling with and suffering from them even without knowing. So now, like we said before, the main purpose of a person is to find Hashem. But the result of it, when you will find Hashem, will be that Hashem will be there with you. Now, Hashem with you is not a million dollar in the bank. It's not a private house. It's not a happy wife or talented and gifted and wise and successful children. It's all of that and much, much more than that. It's the ability to create every good thing that exists in the world and more. It's an endless opportunity of creating options and developments in the world with no number and with no end. No end to the joy and to the satisfaction that we will experience in time of redemption. Now, when we're all just focusing on our small issues, that's when even if we're asking for redemption and for Hashem to come and be here with us, we're not receiving it. Because really, while we are focusing on our personal issues, we're still not humbled enough completely to understand that we are not the center of the universe. And that's why Hashem cannot come completely and stand by our sides and fill our insides. Because Hashem can come only when you pray a prayer of truth. Hashem is close to everyone that calls Him with truth. Now when you are saying to someone, Hey, I want you to come. And the truth is that you don't really want Him to come. You just need something from Him. So Hashem, He is super sensitive. He understands it all. He sees it all. He feels it all. He knows it all. So when you tell Him, Hey, I want you to come. But the truth is that you were just asking for money. So He's not coming. I'm not saying he won't bring the money. Maybe he'll bring the money. But he is not coming. Only when you will desire him with a happy heart, a wishing soul, with a full power desire for his greatness, for all of him to come. First of all, for that you need to understand that this is what you wish. Only then he will come. Only when we will bring it into our minds that we are really supposed to ask from Him to reveal His greatness in all of His power to change nature, to overpower all limitations of physicality, to break the rules of this imaginary world. Only then, when we will ask from Him to come, it will be an honest prayer that will start calling Him. Because like we said, if you call him, hey, Hashem, come, please, Hashem, come, please, Hashem, come. But actually you're saying, hey, I need money, hey, I need money. And actually you're not even asking, hey, I need money. You're just too embarrassed to say, hey, I don't have confidence. Hey, I don't have, 
I don't have money. I'm too scared to deal with the fact I don't have money. Hey, I don't know what to tell my parents. I don't have money. You, even when you ask for money, you need to ask yourself, why am I asking for money? Sometimes you're not even asking for money. Sometimes you just choose to say, hey, Hashem, I want money. Because you think that money will solve your problems. But you are not being honest with Him while praying. Because really your problem is not the lack of money. Your problem really is your lack of confidence in Him that He is with you. And your fear from your own fears to stay without money is bringing you to ask for money. But the truth is that what it really you need to do is an inner, inner work on your fears. That you will stop being terrified. That you will stop being so miserable and lonely and scared and, and lost. To build the faith, to build the emunah, this is the way to progress in life, to grow. Now the emunah is in the nights. The challenge of realizing that your lack of Hashem can happen only in darkness, only in times of challenges and difficulties, then you will experience the lacking of your Savior, of your salvation. And then in that place, you should believe in Him. That's the test. That's the main way to buy faith. To believe in Him when you don't see Him. Because you don't need to believe that we are now standing in a synagogue. You can see it. You have a Sefer Torah, you have a Yichal, you have Parochet, you have everything to show that we're in a Beit Knesset. You don't need to believe. But if I'll tell you that they took out the Sefer Torah from the Yichal, and it's not here, it's being fixed somewhere, now you need to believe me, because you cannot see if the Sefer Torah is in or not. You need to count on me. So now you have a challenge. If you believe in my words, or that you want to check it. Now, to say I'm religious, to say I believe, I'm a believer, yes, there is a Shem in the world, there is a creator to the universe, it's very easy. To say those words, it's very easy. Yes, I believe. What's the problem? On the dollar it's written, in God we trust. Great, wonderful. Like you can, like, on the idol itself, you can write on his forehead, he's God. Okay, so what? It doesn't mean that you believe that you're a believer, that you're a nation of believers. It doesn't mean it really. You say it. It's easy to say. They wrote it in the Second Testament, and they wrote it in the Quran. It's written in the Bible. They, you, like you can write it in the newspapers. It's not a problem. Wherever you want to write it, you want to claim it, you can claim it. No one will tell you no. No, I do. I have my faith. I have my understanding. This I do believe. In time of challenge, you're being tested in your faith. If you're calling your doctor, if you're calling your lawyer, if you're calling your mother, or if you're calling Hashem, if you're calling the Creator. That's the test. Now for that, darkness is so required. For that, the desert is so required. That in the desert, when it's all flat, and you can see clearly that there is no salvation on the way, only the sun is heating and burning your, 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 your head, there, in that place of a complete understanding of your poverty, of your emptiness, then you're standing in that place of humility, that you know that only Hashem can save you in that place, because if your enemies will come, you're done. If animals will come, you're done. If food won't come, you're done. If water won't come, you're done. Only when you see that, because you see the dry land, and you feel the heat, and you see the emptiness, and you don't have no place to hide, no houses, no weapon, nothing, just like naked in front of the sun, only in that position you know that you 100% depend in the salvation of the Creator. That's why only in that place you can receive the Torah as a free gift. You can receive the gift of Hashem because you have the vessel. Now, like we said, what is the gift that we will receive from Hashem? Hashem Himself. <coughs> because Hashem doesn't want to give us a million dollars or a house or boys. Hashem wants to give us the source of good. 
and he is the source of good. So he wants to give us himself. So for that we need to come to that understanding that there is nothing else except of him. That enod milvado. And for that, King David taught us that we must talk to Hashem in our own language as much as we can on a daily basis. And many righteous people confirmed that and recommended on that. And even the Torah is obligating us to pray and to call Hashem from every trouble and to confess on our mistakes. Those are mitzvot midoraita. Those are obligations that have been written to us in the Bible by Moses, the hand of Hashem, to guide us to understand that our faith depends in our mouth. Like the, the verses are saying, Mideda beribo, zachorez kereno od. As much as I'm going to speak with him, that's how much I'm going to remember him. My memory in him, my faith in him, depends on how much I'm going to speak with him. If you're not in touch with someone, so even in time of trouble, you won't call him. First of all, you're going to dial to those people that are on speed dial, those ones that you're in touch with them on a daily basis. Those are the ones that you feel that are close to you. If you're not talking to Hashem, it means that Hashem is not so much in the picture for you. Even if you claim to be religious, even if you claim to have faith, in time of challenge, you're going to call your doctor. Tadir v'sheh, not tadir, tadir kodem. The one that you call him first, you're going to call him first. And the one that you call him last, you're going to call him last. This is why a person must get wiser. And every person should try to think about his, the level of his faith. And to try to see what he can do with it, what he can do to improve his skills in faith, how he can believe more in Hashem, in the Creator. So for that, every person must go and to test himself. Now you have an issue. Don't deal with it alone. Don't consult on that issue with people. Go and give it all to Hashem. Put it all on the back of Hashem. The way to do it is through prayer. When King David established for us that wonderful way of prayer, of an individual prayer, by giving, delivering the book of Tehillim, praises and songs of King David from one generation to the next, he shown us what he was doing in his life. He just posted like we're posting today on Facebook, on, on, on Instagram, what we're doing. I'm doing this, I went to the supermarket, I was doing it bodadut, I went to this uh, tzaddik's grave, and you're posting. King David was writing his, his prayers. He was saying a song for King David when he was in the cave, a song of King David when he was in the desert, a prayer of King David when he was... In, in sorrow, the prayer of a humble person when he's been chased by his enemies. And he was just revealing, describing, telling us his life story while writing those poems, those songs <coughs> that were the way that he was expressing his faith and his emotions and his fears to the Creator, to the one that he was trusting him. Now, King David was not saying Tehillim. He was not reading those Psalms of Tehillim. King David was screaming his guts out. He was pouring his heart with his tearing eyes in front of the Almighty. So he taught us that we should do what that he was doing. He was guiding us to follow his path and not just to imitate him in saying Tehillim. Because Tehillim, even though that it's a great thing, it doesn't necessarily answer to your specific needs in your situation right now. Please remind me where the word mortgage is written in Tehillim. I never seen Mashkanta mortgage in Tehillim. I never saw that word written in Tehillim. I saw many other prayers. So if you remember a verse 
that really touches your situation, you can say that verse. That will be your way of expressing your true emotions. But if now you have a problem with a certain banker or with a certain person that his name is Moshe or Aaron or Yosef or George or whatever, hey, you need to talk about him. You have a boss, you have a client, you have a problem, you have a deal, you need to finish something, you need to sign, you have a contract. Those things will be very hard for you to find in Tehillim. So when you will find yourself saying Tehillim for that issue, you won't find yourself over there in the Tehillim. While saying Tehillim, you will feel disconnected because your issues are referring George and his contract. Now you need to learn from King David to speak about George and his contract like that he was talking about the, that person and that person that were bothering him. And he was telling about them, and he was praying to Hashem to save him from them, and to help him with them, and, 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 and to give him the answer to his deepest questions and problems that he was dealing with in his life. Now, when we want to follow that wise, righteous man, we need to follow his footsteps and not to imitate him. Now, if you want to be a Mekubal, if you want to learn Kabbalah, it means that you need to change your outfit and start wearing white and to, to make other people think that you are righteous? No. You need to spend days and nights with open books, focusing on the wisdom of God. You want to learn Kabbalah or you want to receive an honor like a person that is a Kabbalah learner? Like, what do you want to do? If you want to, people to think thoughts about you, so okay, great, you can play whatever. You can... You can Dress like James Bond, like Elvis Presley, whatever, like, go ahead. But if you want to go into the depths of the secret, of the wisdom of Kabbalah, so that's what you need to do. You need to sit and learn, not to go and, no, me, um, yes, I, just opening the books now, making a shh. Quiet, quiet in the Beit Midrash, learning, Kabbalah here. That's not the way. That's not what you're willing to do. At least that's not what you're claiming that you're willing to do. Your actions are showing your heart. What really you desire? Do you desire to learn Kabbalah? Open a book. Do you want to solve your problems? Do you want to be with Hashem? Go to Hashem. Go speak your heart with Hashem. Now, if you have an issue and you really want Hashem to solve that problem, what are you waiting? What was Moses doing? What was Moshe Rabbeinu doing when he had an issue? He went into the fire, into the fog, into the thunders, into the lightnings, into the darkness, into the rain, into boulders, stones that are being shot from the peak of the mountain, killing everyone that walks even close to the mountain. And what is he doing? He is going into that darkness because Shama Elohim, because Hashem is over there, is going into the darkness, into the most dangerous place for the world right now, into the heart of pain, into the core of fire, the mountain that is on fire right now, and darkness is surrounding it, because he knows Hashem is there. And no one else can do that. Except of him. Now why? Why is he so unique? He chose himself. He chose himself and then Hashem chose him. He saw that there is no one in the world that can help Am Israel. Am Israel were in the depths of darkness in Egypt. In the depths of the exile. Being slavered and suffered and so miserable, being killed on daily basis, being raped on daily basis, thrown to the Nile, executed, all horrible things, poor and, and tortured over there in an exile that the only thing that we can compare it to is the Holocaust that we, that we somehow remember from pictures and movies that we saw, some stories that we heard. This is basically what that took place in Egypt. Same thing. Maybe even worse in the Holocaust, but the same thing that we can like, okay, a nation, a whole nation being slavered by another nation, tortured and killed and raped and destroyed for nothing. Okay, so he was standing in front of that situation in his life and there was no salvation 
in, in, in front of him. He couldn't see no salvation. So what he did, he ran out to the desert when he was 20 years old and screamed and prayed to Hashem for 60 years. 60 years he was calling Hashem. The Demidrash is saying, the Gemara is saying that he didn't left one dot in the sky, that he didn't pray and shot prayers like bows from arrows to those, to those, to those dots. He covered all the sky with his prayers. There is no point in heaven in the sky that he didn't pray to that point. For hours and hours, thousands and thousands of hours, he was begging and asking for the redemption of his nation. For the Creator to come and to reveal His endless love, His loving kindness to His people. And He went with that all the way. So, after doing that job for 60 years, with no revealings, with no prophecies, with no reward, with no success even, no good news from Egypt, no good news. In those 60 years, he heard only bad news because the condition over there in Egypt just became worse and worse. And he hears about his family, and he hears about his siblings, and he hears about all, all the tribes, how much they're suffering and being tortured, and thousands and thousands already been killed, and he, nothing, walking lonely in the desert. Praying every day and every night to Hashem for complete redemption. And then Hashem chose him. Wonderful. Why did Hashem chose him? Because he was not wearing his sneakers and going to the clubs. He was not dating and, and, and having fun and drinking beers on the bar. Because he was not busy in Snapchat 24-7. Just because that he dedicated his life to Hashem. And Hashem saw it that he was defending and protecting and praying and begging for the, for the redemption of his people, Hashem saw, okay, he has a heart and chose him because of his heart. But Moses himself made his heart to be that heart. Moses was not an angel. Moses was a human being. Moses was a person. It was probably hard for him to wake up in the mornings. He had his issues. When he was eating, he had to go to the bathroom. He had to take showers as well. He also had relationship. He had a wife. He was part of a community. He lived over there with Jethro and all of his people over there in Midian. And they had many things in life. He had a herd. He was a shepherd of his herd. He had to take care of the animals, to water them, to take them to places with food. He was a busy man. But into his obligations, into his life, he took Hashem with him. And he was calling him and talking to him on every free moment that he could just remind himself that Hashem is the only salvation for his nation. And he didn't consider his issues and his problems as the main ones. And he dedicated his life for the redemption of his people. So in the end, Hashem chose him and brought a redeemer, a savior, a leader to his people that were over there in Egypt waiting. So now, it doesn't mean that if you'll put the effort, you will become Moshe Rabbeinu. But also to stand by the side of Moshe Rabbeinu is an amazing thing, is a very great thing. I don't know if you need to be Moses, like those 500 text messages that I receive every day from Meshichim, different Meshichim. Every day a different Mashiach is texting me. After all, you for sure can understand. Guys, if you're Mashiach, I'm saying now, no one from here called me ever and said that he's Mashiach. Maybe Hashem don't want to embarrass you, but now to the camera, to our followers. If you're Mashiach, it's not your job to let us know that you're Mashiach. It's written that Elijah the prophet, Eliyahu Navi, he will come and he will say who Mashiach is. So if you are Mashiach and if you're not Mashiach, it's none of no one's else business until Eliyahu, Elijah the prophet, will come and declare on you that you're Mashiach. So I wish you are Mashiach. I bless you to succeed. We're waiting for you for thousands of years. Please redeem us all. But 
Like, I can't help you with it. It's like, I'm not Elijah the prophet to let the world know about you. I'm, I'm Dror Moshe Kasuto, still looking for my, my, my own salvation. <laughs> so, maybe you are Mashiach, Moses, King David, maybe you're not. I don't know who you are. The main thing that you will stay in the, in the light, in the side of the light, in the light. At least not to stand in the darkness, at least not to ignore from the sorrow of our people, of our nation, of the wide world. And this is the complete desire of Hashem, that Hashem wants to bring and reveal His loving kindness on all of His creations, on all of His people, on all of the nations. You think that Hashem wants to, to see other nations suffering and dying like thousands of them, bombing themselves and killing themselves and terror attacks all over the world. Here 38 killed, here 10 killed, here another 70, 30, 20. Like, what are those crazy numbers? And if you're going to count it and you're going to see thousands on thousands are losing their houses, losing their children, losing, losing their lives, losing everything that they can, losing their joy, losing their, their desire for life. Hashem cannot stand that. Hashem doesn't like it. Hashem hates it. Hashem wants to bring peace to the world, comfort to the world, redemption, relaxation, happiness, joy to all of His creations, to animals, to flowers, to trees. Hashem wants the weather to be perfect. Hashem wants the world to, to, to flow, that everything will go smooth. Now it's our job to bring Hashem back to the world. Now how are we going to do that? Like we said before, we need to understand that there is no one else except of Him. And the way to understand it, that our prayers will come out from an honest heart, the way to understand it, to become that honest is by a daily prayer. It's only while working on our skills as believers, not to claim I do believe, not to pretend I do believe, to believe, really to believe. And how do you believe? Learn from King David. When he was terrified and lost, he was expressing his fear to Hashem. If you read Tilim, you see a person that is full with fears. A person that is worried 90% of his time. A person that goes through struggles and, and difficulties and challenges. He was not free from sorrow. He was miserable all of his life. But he was not sparing one moment from expressing his feelings. And he went to Hashem and he spoke with him on it. And not with his best buddy, and not with his friends, and not with I don't know who. He went to Hashem and spoke with him and expressed everything to Hashem. He said, Hashem, I'm afraid of people. Hashem, I'm afraid what they're going to do to me. Hashem, I'm afraid that they will take what that belongs to me. Hashem, bring back the things that they already stolen from me. He was expressing it. Hashem, save me. Hashem, protect me. Hashem, defend me. Hashem, help me. Hashem, I need you. Hashem, I don't know what to do. Hashem, I'm lost. Those are the honest prayers that can be answered. Prayers that are not coming from a sincere and honest place cannot be answered because Hashem cannot accept lies. That's the way Hashem made the world. Hashem made us in a way that the tunnel is getting narrow and narrow, thinner and thinner, that in the end, only the righteous ones will see the light. So we need to be as righteous as we can. We need to work on our attributes never to lie. And if you find yourself that you're lying to yourself, that you're lying to your friends, that you're lying to your soulmate, that you're lying to your children, that you're lying to yourself, to Hashem, you must work on that and not to allow yourself to lie, ever. And if you find yourself, you're caught in yourself, other people are caught in you, that you're lying to yourself by pretending to be someone that you're not. First of all, you need to go with that and to confess and to speak about it with Hashem. To open up yourself to Hashem. If you say to Hashem, Hashem, I'm a liar, or Hashem, today I lied to you, at least now you're being honest. You're being a person that speaks the truth while saying, Hashem, I lied. 
that's the word of truth that you're able to supply. And it's fantastic because then Hashem is with you. Then you will see the blessing of Hashem in that thing that you just spoke about. But if you will keep on pretending and lying and claiming to be someone that you're not, because that you're too scared to deal with the truth, because you're too afraid to admit that you're afraid, you will stay a liar. And Hashem cannot stand by your side because Dover Shkarim lo ikon neged enav. Because Hashem cannot stand in a place that you're lying, that a person is lying. Because Hashem's seal is the seal of truth. Hashem elokichem emet. Elokichem emet. Hashem elokichem emet. Your God is the God of truth. Now if you want to be with Him, you must be a person of truth. You must be an honest person that never lies. And for that, you need not to lie to yourself. And how can you? If you're so scared and terrified what your wife will say, what your parents will say, what your rabbi will say, what your boss will say, what they will do, how they will act. Okay, I understand. So at least be honest in your prayers and go and work on your difficulties and on your challenges. And go to Hashem and express your heart and tell Him, Hashem, listen, I don't know how to deal with my shames with my difficulties, with my defaults, with my weaknesses, with my lusts, with my desires, with my defects, with my problems, with my mistakes, with my crimes, whatever you make up stories to yourself that you're so worse. Nothing, it's a joke. Hashem just wants to hear you. Now when you will come, you're already going to feel better. And even if you need to work on it a little bit to feel more comfortable, you know, when people said hundreds of years ago that the world is round, they would be executed on it. If 500 years ago a person would walk with a mobile and speaking to someone else, he would be executed for that, right? Why? Because people cannot understand something that is new for them. They thought the world was flat, so the world was flat, and you cannot claim else. Because if you will, you try to change things, and look... We're not ready for that. If you would say, no, I'm traveling on time, I'm Meshiach Tzidkenu, people are not ready. People are not ready for you. I'm, I'm, I'm filling gas into their tanks. People are not ready for you. People are not ready. So if people are not ready for you, you need to work on yourself. If you're not ready yet to speak with Hashem, and when you go to do it bodedut, and you go to speak with Hashem, you feel not comfortable. That's why King David said, Mideda beribo zachorez od. As much as you're going to talk to him more and more, that's how much it will become more comfortable for you and easy for you. When I started going to pray in a synagogue and I didn't know how to pray, and I was holding a cedar like I'm holding a, 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 a phone book, I, I didn't know what to do with it. I couldn't, it's written, you pray this prayer in Yom Tov. It's written, you, this prayer is for the holidays. Yes, it's written, that's the Mariv, the prayer of the evening for Shabbat. Na, it's written, it's all written. But when you're new in it, you don't understand it. It's written, Tfilah, Arvit, the Shabbat. And you don't get it. It's written, prayer for Saturday night, evening. And you don't get it. You don't know why, but you don't get it. Shacharit le Yom Tov, Shacharit le Rosh Chodesh. It's written, and you don't get it. So you feel very embarrassed. You feel so lost. Like, yes, everyone is just like flipping pages and, and everything I already finished, and I'm still like looking for myself. Oh, everyone took off their tefillin, and I'm still like, I felt ashamed. But today, I can go to any synagogue with thousands of people, and I'm going to feel comfortable if I understand what they're saying, and if I don't understand what they're saying, because I will feel comfortable, because I know exactly what I came to do. Because I'm used to it. I know that I came to pray Musaf of Shabbat. I don't care where they're holding, and if they're holding. I don't mind. I know what I came to do. I will try to look around. Why? Because I feel comfortable already. Why? Because I'm used to it. So also to go today to the field and to try to do it, but to do it, okay, it can be a foreign experience for you. You never tried it, or you did it once, or whatever. You, you did it in Uman, or you did it five years ago. Okay, I understand. But if you will make it a good habit, 
And every day you will take 5, 10, 20 minutes from your life, one hour from your life, and go to a calm and quiet, comfortable place for you. And in that place you will start opening your mouth. So even if in the beginning it won't be so comfortable to share, and you will feel maybe I'm talking to the air, maybe I'm talking to myself, many, many thoughts can come to a person to show you on your lack of faith to open your eyes to see how far you are from Hashem, that really you don't even believe that He is with you, listening and hearing and accepting your precious words, words of truth. But while working on it more, you're going to develop those skills, and you'll find that ability like a second nature, even a first nature of yours. Suddenly, Hashem will be your salvation, and suddenly you will feel His presence more and more. And he will be more valuable. I'm losing track. How you said it? Available. Available for you in every situation. In every situation, you're going to find him close to you. Because Karov Hashem lechol korav lechol asher yikreu veemet. Because Hashem is close to everyone that calls him with truth. So while you will work on expressing your truth, you will experience His closeness. He will come to you. And He will come closer and closer as much as you go deeper and deeper into your truth. Even if your truth will be to say, I'm scared, I'm lonely, I'm terrified, I don't know how to express my emotions. I don't know how to deal with my post-traumas. I don't know how to deal with... I'm ADD. I'm so confused. I can't focus even in my bodedut. Where's my mobile? I think I lost my mobile. Oh no, it's a camera. If you'll be honest, you will see the blessing of Hashem in Barach with you. You will see that Hashem in Barach is blessing you in your house, with your family, with your, your beloved ones, with your business, with your issues. And the main thing that you will receive is your faith. And your faith will deliver salvations. Like the, the verse is saying, Ish emunot, rav brachot. A man, a person that has faith, he is a vessel to receive all blessings. bottom line, to go and to do it bodedut, to go and to speak with Hashem, not because Rabbi Nachman of Breslev said it, not because that Silimi said it, not because that it's written in Tehillim or by the Bible, because it's your connection to your soul, to Hashem, that's your inner connection, try that, try that, speak for 10 minutes with Hashem on your issues and you will feel relief. You will feel that someone was there with you. And if you found it hard in the beginning, try again. Even Moses, it took him 60 years until his prayer been answered. It doesn't mean that it will take you 60 years, but some time it can take. And it's a natural thing. You want to drive to the grocery store, it can take you 14 minutes, 15 minutes, 17 minutes, 20 minutes, depends. Everything that you want to achieve takes time in this world. And especially when you want to achieve spiritual things. And if you have a Yetzirah like mine, that doesn't let you even pray on yourself, just on, on general issues all of the time, on the wide world's problems. So things might take time. But at least you're drilling in the right direction. At least you're carving your way into the right direction. At least you join to the side that is illuminating and shining the world and helps Hashem to reveal His loving kindness on us. He will show Himself to those ones that followed Him with faith, with Emunah. Because that's what we lack of. We're not lack of religion. We're not lack of learning. We're not lack of davening. We're not lack of mitzvot. We're lack of faith. We can be considered religious and not to have faith in Hashem. And that's terrifying. To be considered and respected and honored and well flattered on your faith while not having it. Now that's a scam. Now that's a lie. That something is wrong in it. When you really consider it as a believer and you don't have faith, 
Because in reality, you call your doctor or your lawyer or your bodyguards, then you have a problem. Because you're also enjoying from an honor that, not deserve, that you not deserve. That's the worst. Stealing from the king himself. That's like worse than a lie, even. That you're stealing from the king. So, thank you very much. We hope you enjoyed this video very much. Please now remember to subscribe and like this video and share it with your friends to help spread faith in the world. For more, please visit amuna.com. May your light shine always and your request should be answered with the greatest blessings. Amen.